um, I've been working with um, AWS um, systems for at least the past four years actively. And um, I've actually been given the task of um, taking us through a brief um, introduction to VPCs. So um, today's so section is actually going to be um, more of hands-on than um, um, than having a lot of theoretical sessions. So I I am going to share a PowerPoint slide just to give us a brief introduction to what um, VPC is and um, some of the components that are there. Then brief diagram of what we are going to actually build um, today. So um, let me just. That's, yeah, okay. I hope everybody can see my screen. Yeah, um, this is just the um, introductory page. I'm going to breeze through this PowerPoint slideshow and I'm going to share it um, subsequently after the whole training. Now, um, what actually is um, VPC? VPC fully means virtual private cloud. It's um, actually a network. Um, dedicated network environments um, in your AWS space. It's um, a kind of a logical isolated data center that you carve out um, in the AWS space that makes you distinct from other networks. And um, within your networks, you can actually host um, your EC2 instances and um, some of your other AWS resources can actually be hosted within your um, VPC. So that is Basically, what it is, it's just like you just imagine yourself having a virtual data center with AWS, and um, you have your rack there, you have your um, servers there, which are EC2s, and um, you have your network connectivity, your IP addresses, everything is all intact in um, your VPC. So that's what a VPC actually is. A VPC is like a kind of a logical dedicated network that is um, with your um, account. Now, there are some, some things that we, we have to always mention whenever we talk about VPCs. We have to understand what availability zones are. We have to know what regions are. Now, um, let me start with regions before I go to availability zones. Um, regions are actually the physical locations around the world where um, AWS have clustered data centers. So there are um, locations, um, sometimes you'll see them identified as countries, like um, you see South African region, for example, you see um, a London region, for example, you see um, um, in the case of the US that um, there are multiple regions, about three regions in the US, you'll see um, an Oregon, for example, as a region, you'll see um, in North California as a region in the US. So those are actually physical locations where um, Amazon, infrastructures are actually located. So um, if I want to now talk about availability zones, now when you talk about a region as um, locations, availability zones are like the discrete data centers in each of those um, regions. You have, most of the time, you have multiple availability zones in a region. Um, for example, you can have like, um, three availability zones in North Virginia. Those are just like physical data centers um, spread across North Virginia. So you can actually decide to put your infrastructure in any one of those um, regions and availability zones. Um, like I said earlier on, a virtual private cloud is actually like a dedicated medical network that carved out for you. Um, you can carve it out yourself or carve out for you as AWS. Now what we want to talk about subnets, we have to um, a subnet is actually um, a subset of um, a virtual private cloud. Now, it's like you having your um, data center broken into, um, for people that actually um, know the integrity of networking, there are some things we call VLANs. It's just like you segmenting your VPC um, into separate segments for different purposes. You can actually segment your VPC in such a way that you want a particular um, part of the network to be accessible from the internet. You can want a particular subset of your network to be 
um, just private, to just communicate privately for probably security purposes or regulation purposes. So that's what the subnet actually does. And um, one thing about subnet is that you can only have a subnet in an availability zone. You cannot have a subnet and say you want to spread your subnet across availability zone. So it's just like you saying one subnet equals to one availability zone. So um, by the time we go um, into um, building up a VPC now, we'll see um, what I mean by that. Then um, also we have to talk about IP addressing too because um, IP addressing addresses actually uniquely identifies your um, your infrastructure, um, your EC tools, for example. It's uniquely identified, and there are sets of numbers that uniquely identifies your network components. And um, you can there are actually two types of IP addresses agreements. We have the IPv4, IP version four, and um, IP version six. Um, the most commonly used one as at the moment is still IPv4, although um, some some um, quotas have actually started using IPv6 actively, but um, IPv4 is still the most commonly used one. We'll still talk about that. We still have some classes of IP addresses. We have types of IP addresses, um, IPv4 addresses like um, the public IP addresses and the private IP addresses. That's actually not um, possibly fine to be. So, um, we have to still talk about security groups too. Security groups actually serves like a kind of a firewall that, um, that actually determines the traffic that um, manages the traffic between, um, that comes in to your network and actually goes out into your network. It's just like you're setting a set of rules of what can actually access or go out of your network. So um, for instance, you might, um, decide to make um, HTTP, for example, accessible from the internet to a particular EC2 instance. Um, that means that um, from your security group, you have to enable um, HTTP, um, which is um, TCP port 80, um, for it to be accessible to your system from uh, to your um, EC2 from um, the internet. You can also restrict the number of people that can actually access your system probably via SSH or via other um, TCP and UDP ports. Then um, routing tables are actually like, um, there are still sets of rules that um, are at the network um, level of, of, of the VPC concepts. Now the security group is like the security for um, your instances, is like the filter for your instances. The routing table is like the one that actually has to do with um, the network, the um, subnets and so on. So that's how the routing table is. So it's just like another layer of um, firewall on your network. Then we have the internet gateway. The internet gateway is usually attached to a VPC and it enables communication between resources um, of your VPC and the internet. And there's also something too that is also called the NAT gateway. Um, NAT gateway is actually very um, essential, especially for um, private subnets um, that you need to actually, you need them to access the internet, but you don't necessarily need the internet to access them. So um, those private components in private subnets can actually route to the internet through um, the NAT gateways. Now, um, why do you need to use the VPC? Now, VPC actually gives you control of your network architecture. It gives you control of your topology, your um, subnet um, architecture, um, the IP address changes, and all of those things. Then, further security for your resources. You can actually use, like I mentioned about the security groups and the access controls. Um, you can actually have control over the kind of security that you have over um, your um, infrastructure with AWS. Then, the, then um, it also enables you to have um, something called the hybrid cloud architecture. Um, for example, you might have um, on your premises, you might actually have your data center on your premises and you want to set up a connection that connects your own premises data center to your AWS infrastructure um, via VPNs, um, 
VPC actually enables you to actually um, do that. It helps you to connect your private, your um, on-premises um, data center to your um, AWS infrastructure. Then um, private, privately internet talk um, with other organizations, there's something we call um, VPC carrying, where you have multiple VPCs and um, you connect them together in pairs. And um, you can also connect, apart from that, you can connect VPC to VPC. You can connect VPC to VPCs within the same region. Um, you can connect um, outside of the, in fact, you can even connect um, a VPC to another VPC on another AWS account. So those are some of the things that the um, VPC actually enables you to do. So, um, okay, um, I've mentioned um, a couple of things here. You can launch your instances in the subnet of your choice, assign, um, like still like telling that you, you still have control over your um, infrastructure within your VPC. Um, with VPC, you can also configure your route tables between subnets. You can create internet gateways and attach to VPCs. And um, you can actually set your um, security groups, just like I've mentioned before, and also set up your network access controls. Now, by default, when you um, when you sign up with AWS, when you open up a an AWS account, you are given a default VPC. So, um, a default VPC actually allows immediate deployment of your instances. So, you can definitely create an EC2 without thinking of thinking of setting up an EPC, um, VPC. Um, probably a private subnet or a sub um, public subnet, you, you can just quickly start your deployment with the default VPC as provided by AWS. All subnets in the default VPC have routes outside to the internet. So that actually helps you to actually go to the internet once you just start deploying. You don't need to start configuring um, internet gateways on your default um, VPC. Every um, then you, every EC2 that you start up, every one of your components have access straight to the internet while they are in the default VPC. Now, um, each of your EC2 instances, for example, will have um, two addresses. You have both a private and a public IP address. In as much as they are in the default VPC, they always come with a private and a prime and a public IP address. Private IP addresses are actually used to communicate within your network, while public IP addresses are the ones that are used to communicate um, over the internet. Um, previously, for now, you you if you if you delete your um, default VPC, it will be very difficult for you to um, get it back. You need to contact Amazon support, and it might not actually take um, it might not be immediate for it to be resolved. But now you can actually create, you can recreate your um, default VPC if you delete it. So it's now um, an easy step. Um, there's a link there that um, we can actually use to just read up on how to set up a default VPC once again. So um, I just have this, um, this diagram of the demo that um, we are going to go into. Um, this is what we are going to be building in the next few minutes. Um, uh, we already have an AWS cloud that we are going to use. We are going to use my account to do that. Then um, um, we are going to select a region. Um, we are going to create the VPC. We are going to um, set up subnets, um, both private and public subnets. We are going to set up um, EC2 instances in both the private and the public um, subnets. We are going to have um, a NAT gateway so that the private instance can actually go to all of these things that are just going to be brief tests so that we we'll know that we are fine. So um, on the screen, um, this is where I am. I am actually located here as the admin. So that is where I'm actually going to be working from. So um, these are some of the references that I used to set up this, um, I think. We are going to share this um, slide um, once this talk is over. And um, this is a brief details about me. Um, like I said, my name is Wally Adeniji, and 
these are actually my contacts. So um, let's just set the ball rolling and go straight to the VPC account and create what um, we have designed in that sheet. So periodically, I'll be showing you um, the sheets so that you know where we are at every point. So um, this is my AWS account. I'm logged in as, um, this is the account alias, but um, probably in your own console, you might not see um, an alias like this. Um, my alias is actually Mozart1893. And um, you might see your AWS account number um, displayed there rather than the alias. So I just set that up just for um, my personal um, fancy sake, let me put it that way. So to set up a VPC, um, it's as easy as um, searching through your services and just type a VPC. So it comes to you like this. And um, you can actually see VPC here on my own console at this um, point because I used VPC recently. So this is actually recently used um, services. So I'll just click on VPC and it takes me straight to the VPC console. VPC console. Yeah, so this is how the VPC dashboard looks like. Um, this is actually the new um, view. Um, you can, if you have this checked, you, if you have this button checked, you have this kind of view, but um, there was a previous view that was before this. I don't want to go um, into that. Now, launching up a VPC with a public and a private subnet can be as easy as clicking the launch wizard, and it takes you through a kind of a step-by-step -step way of doing like VPC with a single subnet, VPC with a public and private subnet, VPC, um, a VPC with a private subnet and hardware VPN access, um, VPC with a private subnet only and hardware VPN access. But um, for the purpose of this um, class, I would like us to actually do these things manually so that we can actually see these things as they come. We'll see um, the differences on, um, we'll be able to see all of those components and create them ourselves and see how they actually work. So I'm going to cancel and exit and come back to my VPC dashboard. Now on my VPC dashboard on the left side of my screen, you'll see virtual private cloud. Then you'll see um, under it, you'll see your VPCs. So um, I'll click on your VPCs, which is actually my VPC. <laughs> so um, now, take note of this. VPCs are created in regions. Um, if I create a VPC right now, it's going to be created in the London region. Um, if I want to create a VPC elsewhere, I will just need to just change my region um, and go straight to wherever I want to create it create the VPC. So you can see all of the, um, this Africa, this Cape Town, South Africa. This is um, the Asian zone, Canada, Europe, Middle East, and um, the US and like that. But um, for my own purposes, um, I think um, the latency from here to um, London region um, from my location at the moment, London region is very, very fair. That's why I used to use um, London VPC right from uh, my location. Um, if I measure the, there was a link that was shared on the group one time about um, the, I can actually add it to the slide so that we can be using that to test the latency um, of different regions to us so that we'll know where is more appropriate for us to put uh, um, our instances. So um, at this point now, I'll just create create VPC, and it shows us the first page. Tells us to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my VPC. Um, that's what I'm going to call it. Now, this CIDR IPv4 CIDR block is the IP address that is supposed to be assigned to the VPC. This is not the subnet address, so let us get it twisted. This is actually the IP address for the VPC. Now, um, I don't want to go into the details of IP addressing, but um, 
I have chosen um, the IP address 10.0.0 slash 16 as the VPC IP address. So by the time I'm creating my subnet, I will have to do a little network subnetting for this particular block so that I'll be having smaller chunks of um, networks in my subnets. So that is um, the idea about that. I'm going to give um, IPv6 CIDR block as default, but just as it says, um, if you don't want it, you just um, check this box. You select this. Um, if you want Amazon to provision IPv6 addresses for you, you just select this. But um, at the moment, I just want to go with IPv4 that um, we are very familiar with. Now, the tenancy. Now, there are two options default or dedicated now um i'll go for default for the purpose of this class but um for some reasons you might need to actually choose dedicated probably you have some regulatory obligations like um for security purposes and other things but um just take note that if you choose dedicated um tenancy it means um the cost of running your um the cost of running your components um might actually shoot up so that is um, that about that. So I'll just click on create and we should be done. It's as simple as that. I've just created um, the VPC. So um, basically I've just created the VPC and it's like that. So this is the VPC I just created just now. It is um, my VPC and um, yes, these are the details, the description of it. This is the IP address that I selected. Um, the network access control list, um, the DHCP options, and these are just basically the, the tenancy that is selected as default. Um, is this a default VPC? You know, we mentioned default VPC briefly in the, um, the slide during the slideshow. Um, it's telling you that this is not the default VPC. Now, default VPC, like I said, usually comes with every account you open. So. Um, if I click once, in, in I chose this other one, it tells me that this is the default VPC, but um, this, my VPC, is actually not the default um, VPC. So we have crossed an module. We have actually created um, the very first thing, we've created our VPC. Now, once you create a VPC, you have to take note that it automatically creates a route table for that VPC you just created. So if I click on route table on my left um, side here, um, you'll notice that I have two route tables there. The very first one here, if you take a look at this VPC ID, you can see it actually um, wrote the name my VPC here. That is the one that was automatically created with the new VPC I just set up. So um, this is actually the details, are the details of the route table to my new VPC. And um, this one is actually for the default VPC. Now, there's something called the main VPC. Now, this default route table is actually the main route table for the newly created VPC. So we'll get to that um, subsequently when we want to create um, another route table. Now, um, automatically, security groups. Let me go straight to security groups and see um, what's up with that. Now, a default security group um, was created as well. One minute, please. Um, yeah. Let me open this up. So um, immediately you, you immediately you you create a VPC. A security group is also created for you for that particular VPC. Um, I'm trying to look for the one that it is. If it's like not this, I think, yeah. I think this should be it. I can't remember my, I think this should be, this one is actually the VPC ID. Let me see if this is my VPC, which I doubt. I doubt this. Uh, oh no, this is, not, this, is not, this is not mine. It's actually the first one. So this is the um, security group that was created for my VPC. You'll see it's, the link takes me 
straight to my VPC. So this security group um, was created. Then um, NSTL, Network Access Control. You also have one Network Access Control automatically created for you. Um, on my right side, I'm actually looking for NSTL Network Access Control. This is Network Gateway. I'm covering my eyes now. Network Gateway Access Control is what I'm trying to look for. Not Gateway. Okay. I think I'll come to that later on, but okay, yeah, this is it. Network I'm access control. Curious. Now, the network access control is actually, you also have one network access control created for you by default. So just take note of it that automatically, once you create a VPC, a default route table is created for you. A security group is created for you. And then the network access control is created for you. Once you create a VPC, subnets are not automatically created. You have to create subnets yourself. And then internet gateways are not automatically created as well. You have to create automatic, um, you have to create um, internet gateways yourself. So let's go straight to the creation of um, subnets. Now this is my VPC, how do I create subnets? I'll just come to the left um, side of my screen and click on the tab subnets. Now, um, these three subnets you see here are actually the subnets that are associated with the default VPC that we've been working, that um, came with the account. So for me to create a new subnet, it's as easy as clicking create and I'm giving it a tag. I'll call this um, my subnet public. I'll call this my subnet public. And um, you have to attach this subnet to a particular VPC. Now, in my case, I'm going to attach it to my VPC, which is the newly created one. Then um, availability zones. Like I said earlier on that, you can only attach a subnet to one single availability zone. So um, in this case, I'm just going to choose um, EU West 2A as my availability zone. The availability zone I want to associate this subnet to. Now, um, Remember, this is the CIDR block that we chose for the VPC. We have to create a CIDR block for this subnet as well. So in my case, I've chosen 10.10.0.0 slash 24. Now, the slash 24 um, address gives you about 256 IP addresses. Now, um, the 256 IP addresses, um, AWS actually reserves Five. Um, let me say five are actually unused, and um, because um, the very first one, which is the dot zero of this IP address, is the network address. The dot five five is the broadcast address. Obviously, you can't use them um, at all. But um, AWS actually uses um, dot one, dot two, dot three for internal purposes. Um, the dot one address is actually for the VPC router. The dot two is for DNS services. Then the dot three is actually reserved for future use. So um, your IP addresses in your subnet, you cannot use dot zero, dot one, dot two, dot three, and dot two five five. So can I ask you? So that question? is um, what it is at the moment. So let me just create this, and we are as good as done. So this is my public um, subnet that has been created. So let me just quickly go straight to the um, creation of the second um, subnet and call it my subnet private a VPC are associated with my VPC, just the same thing that we've done before. Then um, let me choose um, 2B as my availability zone and 10.10.1.0 um, slash 24 for my private um, subnet. So I'm creating that um, right away. And if you see at the moment now, we have two subnets, the private and the public. I deliberately named them private and public so that we will be able to visually identify them once we see them. I remember, like I said about the available IP addresses, um, we're supposed to actually have two, five, six IP addresses, but available for this slash 24 block to us is 251, based on the fact that five of those IP addresses are unusable. The network address, the broadcast address, 
then one, two, three, which are uh, one for UPC, is dedicated for the UPC router, two dedicated for the DNS services, then three is actually reserved for future use. So um, that's why we have um, these IP addresses. So um, we've moved ahead, we've created a VPC, we've created a private um, subnet, we've created a public um, subnet. So it's now left for us. Now, the next thing I would like to do is for us to create an internet gateway. Now, obviously, uh, we'll need an internet gateway for our public subnet to be able to reach the internet. So um, this is how we do that. You see internet gateway as an option on the left side of the screen and click. Yes. Okay. So um, creating an internet gateway is, is just as simple as AWS makes life easy. Um, just click on create internet gateway and all you need to do is to give it a name tag. So I'm going to give this a name tag as um, my, my internet gateway, my IGW and create this. Yeah, that is all. So now I actually have my internet gateway. So now it's, you can see this uh, flag on, on the top of the screen that tells you that the following internet gateway was created and you can now attach it to a VPC to enable communication with the internet. So I now actually attach this um, to a VPC um, so that um, the VPC can actually have access to the internet. So I'll click on attach to a VPC and A is where you are going to be having the available VPCs. Now, each VPC can only have one internet gateway. You cannot have multiple internet gateways associated with the VPC. Um, that's something that is worth um, noting. So um, you see that on this my region, I have two virtual private clouds. I have two VPCs, which are the first VPC and my VPC that I just created. But um, in the drop down option, I was only given my VPC because it does not have an internet gateway. So I only get one internet gateway and attach it to one VPC. So um, that's how that goes. And um, attach, it's as simple as that. So we've created that, um, we've created an internet gateway um, and has been attached to our VPC. Um, the next thing for us to do is to um, ensure that our public subnet can actually access the internet. But um, at the moment, um, what we need to do first in this case is to create a public crowd for our um, public subnet. So, um, if you click on this, on the public subnet, uh, you'll see the route tables there. Now, the route tables, it just says that you can communicate, anything within this um, subnet can communicate with every um, component of your VPC. Remember that this is actually the block for our VPC. So even if you have 10 or 15 subnets, all of them can communicate locally. But for you to be able to communicate with the internet, you have to edit, you can choose to edit this um, routing table, but personally, I would prefer to create a new routing table and attach it to the subnets um, so that we can actually modify later on if we need to modify and for troubleshooting um, purposes. So what I'll do is I'll go to route tables, and create a new route table. So um, it's as easy as clicking on create a new route table and give it a name tag. Um, I'll give it a name tag as um, um, public my public route table. Yeah. Then I want to attach it still to my VPC. Yeah. And that is it.
yeah, and that's that's it. So I can close this, and you can see this is actually my route table. So um, this is my new route table now. I need to associate it with a subnet. This is where um, the name public subnet and private subnet can actually be uh, can actually lead to what they are called. So if I click on um, from the options I have below my screen here, um, still route. Um, which is the default route that we, we have because it has been associated to our, our VPC. Then these are the subnets. This, there is no subnet that is attached to you. You do not have any subnet associated with this route table at the moment. So what I need to do is for me to associate my public subnet to that route table. Um, yeah, so I'll just click on this public and save this. Okay, so so that is that about that. So my public subnet has been associated to that route table. Now I still need to do one more thing. I need to adjust the route. So I need to adjust the route for traffic to be able to reach um, the internet. All I need to do at this point is from this route tab, I'll click Edit Route and add a new route. Now my destination is the internet that is anywhere 0.0.0.0 .0 slash zero. Um, that is actually anywhere on the internet. Should go through our internet gateway, the target internet gateway that we just created. So the target internet gateway is where this public um, this internet um, destination should actually go through so um i'll save the route and we are good to go we are good to go so um let me close this so um just for the record we've created the vpc we've created two subnets we've created the vpc we've created um Two subnets. We've um, created an internet gateway. We created the public route table, um, the one we've just done. And then there's one more thing that we need to do with our subnets. There's one more thing we need to do with our subnets. Um, now, um, there's this particular option that needs to be checked. Now, on our public subnets. Now, on our public subnet, um, you'll notice that um, most of the time in your default subnets, when you create an instance, it gives you a public IP address and it gives you a private IP address immediately. Um, that is simply because of the fact that there's an option that was checked that says that, you, that um, the setting that was set that your that particular subnet should automatically assign IP addresses, public IP addresses to the instances within it. So um, this is where we do that setting. Click on the public um, subnet and click on actions, drop down the actions. Then you'll see an option that says modify auto assign IP address settings. So if I click on that, it brings out this option for me. And all I need to do is just to check this. So every um, instance that I create in my public subnet will come with an IP address. Just for you to check that, if you scroll to the side of your screen here, you will see one of the tabs that says auto assign IP addresses, and you can see it has been highlighted as yes here. Then this one that says no is obviously a private um, subnet. So no matter what we do, our private um, subnet all of the components that are private subnet will not be able to access the internet without us attaching something called an elastic IP to it. Um, yeah, which actually defeats the purpose of having a private IP and private subnet actually. So um, that is that about that. So um, I think the next thing for us to do is just to create um, instances and test them out within uh, subnet just to create instances and test them out. Let me see how fast we can do that. So creating instances, we have to come back to services. 
and come to EC2. Now, take note of the fact that you must still remain within the region um, that you created your instances. You must just still remain with, within that region so that you'll be able to choose your, um, your virtual private cloud that you just created. So um, I'll just go straight to running instances. At the moment, I don't think there's any instance that is running here. So um, create, um, launch an EC2. Um, for the purpose of this class, I'm just going to check a filter out by Fritzer and scroll down. I would like to choose Ubuntu Server 20.04. I would like to choose Ubuntu Server 20.04, which is actually the most recent um, LTS version of Ubuntu Server, and click Select This. Now, um, T2 Micro is enough for us to do the test for this class, and it's also eligible in free set, so I'll just go straight to the configuration. Now, how many instances do I want to set up? I just want one at the moment. Um, what else do I need to do? Now, automatically, I assign public IP. Now it says use subnet settings. You can see it's enabled because I've enabled it at the VPC level. <coughs> Excuse me. But if I want to disable it for this particular instance, I'll just click disable. But I'll leave it as default so that we have a public IP address to that instance immediately. Um, for the purpose of this um, class, I think I'm still going to leave everything here as default and go next to storage. I'm leaving storage as default as well and um, I'll go to name tags. Now, um, I like creating name tags. It helps me to actually identify um, public, public instance. It helps me identify uh, my um, EC2, my components um, easily. So I'll go to security groups. Now, this is where um, the security groups takes um, effect. So, so this is where you have to filter out the kind of traffic that you want to come in or out of your network. Now, um, let me give it a name and say my public, my public SG, security group, and um, give the same name as description and come in, enable SSH. If I enable SSH, it will grant me access for me to be able to log into the server via SSH. And I also want to enable um, another rule, um, the HTTP rule, so that I'll be able to access the um, instance via my web browser. Um, because I, I just quickly want to do a bootstrap of um, a simple web page um, on this instance. So that's it. I like labeling um, things. I can just label it here for HTTP access. Um, for possibly um, future reference. Review and launch. So are we good? Yes, we are good. It's taking an AMI, default AMI of um, this. Ah, no, no, we are not good yet. I need to set up a bootstrap. Now, configure instances. This is where I set up my bootstrap. Now, the I'm just going to um, write a brief um, bootstrap command here that will run as I am launching my um, EC2. Um, I'm actually going to run it as bash. So it's going to locate my bash um, interpreter in the server once it's finished launching. Um, do an update on the server. Then um, install Apache 2. Um, this why means that just say yes when you when the person is access or no. Then um, I'll start the Apache service with this command. Then um, this is actually writing just a simple HTML um, HTML code that is being echoed into the HTML um, index.html file in var www.html directory. So it's um, just so that we'll be able to actually view um, an output if we type, if we put the IP address on our browser. So that's that. So let me just go and say review and launch. That's the last thing we need to do. And I'll just launch this. Now, um, this is where the security key, um, this is where the key, PEM key comes in. 
Yeah, so at the moment, I have a key called uh, my key pair. Uh, let me confirm that. I think I still have that. My key. Yes, I have this. So I'm just going to acknowledge the fact that I have it. If you don't have, you have to create um, a new key because if you don't create a new key or you don't have an existing key, you might not be able to log into your. Um, while you cre create a new one. Can I do what? Hello? So, um, someone suggested you create a new one. Okay, I should create a new one. So let me just create yeah. a new one. Um, create a new key pair, and I'll call it um, my key, my key two. So I'll just create and download it. Once you download it, it downloads straight into your local system here. Yeah? And once it's downloaded, the launch instance button actually becomes active so you, you can click without downloading it this launch instance um button will not become active so you have to download it first so they will be sure that you actually have the key before you launch so click on launch and we are good to go if i go back to view instances you can see it's actually pending so while this one is running um it might take a little while because of the boots um bootstrap um, script I put in there because after launching it helps to run the bootstrap um, key. Let me just quickly create um, the one, the private instance now while this one launches. That one wouldn't take us much time. It's just still the same cycle of um, process. So um, Ubuntu, um, C2 micro, conversion details. I'm not going to put any bootstrap here. So um, Next is okay. Yeah, I have to select the VC. I'm taking it to my VPC. Then the subnet is going to be my private subnet. Remember that um, this is actually for the purpose of private um, subnet. So I, you can see that I say automatically assigned public IP because I didn't enable it at the VPC level at the subnet level. Um, it told me that it's disabled. So I'm going to leave it for that purpose. So it's still disabled. I'm not going to um, add that. So I'm going Hello. to add. Yes. Hello. Just a quick one. I yes. think the, the protection against uh, uh, racial termination should always be put in place. Oh, yes. Let me go back to that place. Um, OK, yeah. If there's um. There are a lot of um, things in this configuration page that you can actually do. Um, this is where you can actually launch your spot instances and um, all of those. So there are a lot of behaviors that you can actually modify. For example, shutdown behavior, for example, there are two options. It's either when you click shutdown, it could terminate your, your, your instance, which is very risky. So um, here is where you actually set it as. When you say shutdown, you should just stop your instance. Now, um, Ibanic behavior, um, enable termination protection was what you asked. And enable termination protection is actually good for production environment, especially, so that um, nobody can just go. I, I can actually demonstrate that here now. I'll enable it so that by the time I get, when this instance gets created, I'll just try to use one button click to just decide to terminate the instance so that you'll see that it will be protected. You have to go and um disable this setting before it can actually be protected now the monitoring and um monitoring too is actually um something that is good for production environment as well if you want um to monitor the performance of your of your instances um per time um additional charges might actually apply but it's actually very good for audit purposes and for um for visibility purposes you'll be able to actually have that to do. Uh, this tenancy too is just like the one we saw in VPC that you have dedicated um, tenancy or you have shared. Now in this one, it's even, specific, it's even specified that it is shared. That is, your hardware can actually be running your instances and be running other instances as well. So it's not like the hardware that is dedicated to this particular instance is only for this instance. Some other um, instances can actually share the same hardware at the AWS level, but you are always I'm sure that um, there is no other instance that will have access that can have access to your instance. So um, that's that about that.
So um, storage. I'll just leave the storage as default, where you can actually modify the size of your storage at this point. You can um, enable the encryption at this point, and um, you can, yes, specify the type of your um, storage. You can set to use provisional SSD or magnetic um, magnetic um, drive, which is um, I think practically getting old. But um, the SSD is the GP2 is actually the one that is. Um, left here as default, so I'm going to do that now. So, um, name tag as well. I'm just going to call this my um, private this instance. Yeah, and um, configure security groups. Now, like I said, it's actually this is actually where you filter traffic, where and what can go to anywhere. But I'm just going to just add an additional um, rule to this, so that I'll be able to ping this particular um, instance. So um, I'm going to add the ICMP rule, um, which is this custom ICMP, and um, oh, no, sorry, which is um, yeah all icmp ipv4 um this particular rule enables me to be able to ping in and into this server and get a response so um let me just um review this and launch yeah now you can see i have i have an error i, I have um, a flag here that is telling me something now it's telling me that um the icmp rule i just created i did not create um the source for it now if i click on zero 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 it actually defeats the purpose of um since no it does not have internet access i don't want anybody to be able to ping it from the internet what i'll need to do at this point is just to specify the um cidr of my subnet that anybody from my subnet can actually ping this, um, not necessarily from the internet. So um, I think we are good to go with this, and I can review and launch. So once I launch this, um, I will still maintain this my um, my keypad too, and I'll just acknowledge I have since I, I just created one. I'll just acknowledge I have this key, and launch. So um, this is going. So um, let's go back to our instances and see what's going on. Now, the public instance that we created earlier has finished um, spinning off. And if I click on this now, I'll be able to see the details. Let me maximize this detail pane a little so that we'll be able to see this. Remember I said it will have a public IP because it's automatically assigned a public IP to it. So this is the public IP address, this is the public DNS address. Um, likewise, um, this is the Oh, I did I set this up in another in, in another VPC? Yes, it seems I did set this up in another VPC. Yeah, that's that's true. So I need to actually reset this up in uh, my in my um, you, 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 you set it up in the default VPC. Yes, I did that. I, I set it up in the default VPC. Yeah. It will take me less time since I'm just going to walk through this now. Um, um, while you do that, Wally, we can probably just take some questions. What do you think? Okay, yes. All right, fair. Um, so, to everybody that is on, please, if you have questions, I've, there are some questions that have come in, um, feel free to ask. Um, and if anybody wants to answer, you know, you can also respond to the person that's asking the, qu the question. So, let's just make this a conversation while Wally um, tracks back and corrects that. Okay, um, my, my question would be this. No, now that um, Wally realized that he created the instance in another VPC, is it not possible to just to edit the VPC um, um, option alone to remove it from the current VPC? Sure. So your question is: Is it is it now possible to modify the VPC um, in the, like on the fly, right? Yes. Yes. Instead of having to spin up another server. Sure. Does anybody want to, want to answer that?
So you can just repeat the question a bit. My internet was breaking up a little bit, so I only caught like one or two words there. Sure. So the question was, um, while Wally was building the EC2 instance, it was built in the wrong VPC. Why couldn't he just change the VPC um, instead of having to go back and build another instance? Okay, so the short version there is that when you create an, uh, an instance, there's some networking that we create along with the actual virtual machine. And that lives inside the VPC next to that virtual machine. You can't just um, change that. Um, so that's why you'll have to shut down the machine um, and create it in the different VPC. It's just the way it attaches itself when you instantiate and create the resources. They're bound to the VPC that you use to create them. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank much. you. Thank you very much. So yeah, um, this might take a little while. Just like we said, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's now running. It's now running. So how do I do patient application? Yes. Um, another question. Sorry. Yes. Um, sorry. Well, another question came in. Um, can Amazon EC2 instances within a VPC communicate with EC2 instances that are not within a VPC? Am I happy to take that one again? Um, so the short answer there is no. The reason is that you can't launch an EC2 instance that isn't inside a VPC. It always has to be inside a VPC. Correct. I believe at some point, maybe in like the earlier versions of EC2, EC2 Classic, I believe you could launch um, um, instances that were not within a VPC, but I don't think that's supported anymore. No, I'll have, to, I'll have to check. I think um, uh, what it was called EC2 Classic. I yeah. don't think you can launch them anymore. Yeah, yeah, correct. No, you can't launch on Classic anymore. Yeah, yep. So, um, can we go on? Yes, uh, okay, guys, thanks for the questions. We'll go on. Wally, please. All right, yeah. So um, this is actually the correct um, instance now. Um, this is the IP address, the private IP address um, assigned to it, 10.10.0.189. And this is the public IP address assigned to it, 3.8.124.219. So um, you know, I created a bootstrap um, script that will install Apache and um, show me, um, display something to me when I put this public IP address in my browser. Um, let's see if that works now. And um, yes, ladies and gents, we are live. That's just the contents of that script. So it means um, the instance was properly created, um, the script was properly run, um, Apache was installed and um, the HTML tag that displays this was actually properly um, echoed into, was properly um, written into the index.html file of um, that particular instance. So um, at the moment, we've done, we've created a VPC. We've created um, two subnets, a public and a private subnet. Um, we've um, we created, um, an internet gateway. Um, we created a public route and um, attached it to our public um, um, IP address, to our public subnets. And then we spinned up basically three instances. But um, for the purpose of this class, we, we spinned up an instance in the private subnet and the public subnet. So um, let me just go ahead and log in to the let me go ahead and log in to the um, server that we have, the public instance, yes. I need to maximize this, yeah. Yeah, so this is the correct one that we need to have. So um, for me to be able to log in, um, I'll bring up my terminal to my screen. Yes. Um, this is my terminal, it's a little transparent. So let me just um, zoom it out a little so that we'll be able to view 
what I am doing. Okay, well, let me put it on this side of the screen. I'm put this on this. Uh, no, I can't share this. Okay, let me just maximize this. And uh, my thumbnail comes back. So now, um, remember that we actually downloaded um, a key, the public key, which is um, situated in my download folder. So I'll have to navigate to where that is. Download. Yes. So for me to confirm that, I'll just list it. Um, I called it my my key to yeah. So it's it's there. So it's just for us to be sure that it's there. I don't want to leave the content of the download folder. Okay, that's why I just listed only that. So um, the first thing you need to do for you to be able to connect to this instance is for you to change the permission of this key. Um, you have to make it at least secure enough. So to do that, you have to issue a command from your terminal, G mode, 400, then um, your key, my key to dot pen. So this actually changes the permission of the key to what we can actually use to log into our server. So now logging so, into the server is, yes. Well, it doesn't keep one. This terminal you are using is for Windows uh, system or Mac. Oh yeah, sorry. This terminal is actually um, an Ubuntu terminal. It's um, my system is actually an Ubuntu system, um, so I'm just running it from the terminal. If you're using a Windows system, um, I'm not quite sure. I think um, there is. Um, I think the new versions of Windows now have um, terminals that can run independently, but um, I know most common way of accessing. Um, a terminal emulator with um, Windows system is usually by Forty or other terminal emulators. But I'm quite sure that Forty is so common and that's what people what? use. But with um, Linux and Mac, um, your terminal can actually um, carry out regular terminal operation. Yes, I use a bit vice on Windows. I don't know if that one is right. It's okay. Can I do what? Big vice. Big vice. I use mobile SM. It's very good. Okay. I, 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 I use 40, 40 gen and um, CGWIN. I do not have another thing. Can you guys type, type it into the chat section? I think it will be helpful for everybody to see what those are. Okay. All right. But um, since I'm actually using a Linux system, I'll just use my um, terminal and it takes me there straight. Um, I can actually do all my terminal operations without having a third party application installed. So um, let me quickly log in to, um, let me quickly log into the um, public instance now. And um, the command is just as simple as SSH. Um, you reference the key, that is include the key, my key to dot pem. Then the username on the instance, um, by default, Ubuntu username is um, Ubuntu. Then at the public IP address, that is 3.8.124.219. And yes, are you sure you want to continue? It's just um, trying to tell me that, they want, um, that the key um, needs to be added to my non host, and I will just type yes at this point, and I should be in in a couple of minutes. Yes, in a couple of seconds. So let me clear the screen so that we can see. So I am in the server now. Um, by default, the username of um Ubuntu servers will come with the private IP address, which is actually what we can see. Uh, if you can see my transparent terminal, it's actually the same as so it's just also that we are in this um we are in this um server that we are looking at at the moment. So um so um that's the first step that we've done. I think we've spent a lot of time. I don't know. Um, probably if we need to just continue um, later on with connecting my 
how I can actually okay. Let me connect to the problem to the private. Sure. Uh, let's let's try and make it quick because we I think we we have like 15, 20 minutes over. So. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me just quickly go. Let me check the private instance. Yeah. This is the private instance, and um, how do I access it? How do I access this since I have no way of accessing it from the internet? Now, um, let me share my. Let me. You can probably copy account. the keys to the server, then you exactly. can access it. Gentlemen. Exactly. So I can just do this from my local system. Um, cut my key. Dot pem. So it actually gives me um, the contents of the private key. So what I'll need to do at this point is just for me to. Is this look complete? I doubt if this is complete. Uh, oh, yes, no. you can just copy the contents and create a new file. Yeah. Um, my terminal did not make it complete earlier, so let me just do this. So I'll just copy this content and take it to and take it to my um, to my server and just touch a file. Touch my key to dot pem. This one is for me to actually create a file called mykey2.pem. Um, you can use any file editing um, tool to do that, uh, to paste in the contents of that public uh, private key into this mykey.pem. Um, preferably, I use um, Vim for mykey.pem. And um, this is it. So for you, if you're using Vim, um, first thing you need to do is to um, Type the letter I, paste it in, and paste um, what I copied in here. So um, I've pasted it. Um, I'll press Escape to leave the um, insert mode. And um, colon WQ is right and quit. So um, that is it. So for me to be able to access this, my, um, my, um, private instance from here. Just like we did earlier on, I have to change the permission, she mode, 400, and um, the name of the key, my key pair, my key to the pen, yeah. So SSH into, that will be SSH include my key dot pen, Ubuntu at um, 10, which is the private IP this time around, 10.10.1.115. Enter. So it's asking me if I need to do um, add this to my known post, which I've done. Now, at the moment, I am now, I have SSH into my private instance. But for you to be sure that this is actually, um, this cannot access the internet, you can just Easily run a ping, um, 4.2.2.2, for example, and um, um, it will just stay there forever. Or you can actually try to run an update, sudo apt update, and um, it will not connect because of the fact that this instance is actually in a private subnet and it has no way. For it to actually get out to the internet. Um, I think I'll actually take a pause here. Um, allowing this private instance access the internet for purpose of probably updates, patch updates, or other other reasons. Um, all we need to do, um, this is actually because our time is actually past tense. All we need to do is to create something called a NAT gateway. Um, all we need to do is to create a NAT gateway in our public subnet. So anytime that the private um, instance needs to communicate with the internet, it will have, actually have to route through the NAT gateway. So I think, let me just take a pause from here. Akim, would that be fine? Or Sam? Yeah, that would be great. Oh. Um, so you can just uh, you can just do a 
quick recap of everything that we covered and then we can round up. Okay, yeah. So um, we, I'll, I think we're going to share the, the PowerPoint presentation um, with um, participants of this. Yes. So we were able to create a, um, a VPC and um, the CIDR for the VPC is 10.10.0.0 slash 16. Then um, within the VPC, we created two subnets, a public subnet and a private subnet. Um, we enabled automatically automatic assignment of public IPs on the public subnet. Now, um, after we did that, we created um, an internet gateway. We created an internet gateway and we attached it to our newly created VPC. And um, we created a public route cable as well. And associated with our new VPC, and we also edited the destination and targets of um, the newly created route table so that um, that will actually take us straight into the internet. Then um, we spinned up um, two servers, um, one in the public um, subnet and one in the private subnet. The one in the public subnet, we used the bootstrap um, code, which I'm going to make available as well. So, um, ensure that we have something custom displayed to us when we access it with our browser. So, and then we're able to SSH into the public instance via the internet, and um, we're able to SSH into the private instance from the public instance. So, at the moment, the private instance does not have access to the internet because of the fact that there is no NAT gateway um, installed and set up on the VPC. So um, that's where we are going to actually take a pause for um, Amazon VPC part one, as we um, had before. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wally. Thank um, you very much, Wally. I appreciate it. Very much appreciated. Um, Akim, do you want us to stop this recording so that we can start another another recording um, in the next session? Yes, uh, yes, uh, I can I can stop and then yes, absolutely. So let me stop this.